So we have to have our date up here. And then we have to have something that is our outcome variable. So we can here, for example, have stock closing price. Okay, so that we have we have two things here now. All right. So we need some sort of forecast with this. So what we can do is there's a couple ways to do this. We have the forecast option in the analytics tab up here, and you can just throw this on here and it will it will do your forecasting for you or you can go up here to analysis and click on forecast you can do it that way so let's see here why did that not work oh okay that's why year no oh, i didn't like the way i had the years one two three four five okay hold on a second i've got an, a better example here that i can show you it's kind of finicky with how it expects to see the dates. So let me, okay. There's that one, there's that forecasting. Let me share that. Where'd my window go? There we go. No, that's not what I wanted to share. Oh, goodness, okay. Got too many windows here going on. Okay, can y'all see that? Let me share. There it is. Okay, now it's letting me show you that. Okay, so oh. this is one of the examples off the Tableau website. So this is their global superstore. This is their sample data set. So they have customers, orders, shipping, all this stuff. So they've thrown up here month, well, they've taken ship date and they've taken it down here and they've grabbed the month out of it. So you have May 2015. And then we have shipping costs. So that's our outcome variable. So then all we really have to do, because we had this nice pretty line graph here that shows us some sort of directional component. So we can take and add our forecast and just throw it on there. And then we see kind of this gray area is, is what our forecast values would be for those years extending on what we have actual data for. So it's really as easy as that. Uh, now you can delve deeper into this and look at some of the forecast options where we can have it just do one more year or have it be automatic. You can ha have it fill in missing values with zeros, but we don't really need to do all that. Uh, this is really all we're really looking for is what are our estimated values for a year or two on out? So let's see, I have some more data in here I wanted to show. Let's see. Okay. There's another simpler one. Let me get rid of this sheet that I made. So is that? Oh, that's not what I wanted. One of the recall information. There we go. So this has to do with vehicle recalls, which is kind of interesting. Um, okay. Now, if we go and look at the sheet, we see. How, how did you? Sorry, how did you get that to update? Okay, so. Because every time I have to start a new Tableau. You you can ed, go to data and edit the connection. And then go find oh. find your new sheet you want to use, okay. and then you're gonna to have to remove this mm -hmm. here, and then drag your sheet from your new workbook over here. Then it'll okay. it'll auto populate. Okay. So yeah, some of the sub menus we can't see, but that's okay. Okay, that's odd. Okay. So here we have an issue which I I've, I've had a lot of students um, talk to me about is. This is supposed to be a year, and Tableau is reading it incorrectly. So if we go and actually look at this file in Excel, uh, let's see, there it is. What, I, what I've done is, initially what I had done is just have 2008, 2009, and it doesn't work so well that way. So what I ended up having to do is have an actual full date here and make sure in Excel we actually call it a short date. 
and then Tableau can see this correctly. So let me save this and we'll call this fix. Because if, if you just simply went over here and did like 2008, 2009, look, look what happens. <laughs> it sees it as a really odd date. So I have to make sure when, when you're doing that, especially if you're typing in manually, you're, you're being aware of that. Otherwise, Tableau is going to not work out so well with that. So let's go back. We can click on this and go back in here. I have it fixed. Okay, now I need to remove this sheet from that's from the old worksheet and put this new one on here. And it's still giving me that issue. But here, let's try let's try something here. Okay. Oh, I am gonna have to do a new worksheet because it's not it's not liking that I switched sheets on it. Okay. Sometimes it, I don't want to save that here. Close that. Okay. Excel. There we go. We'll start fresh with a new one. It's our forecast. Now see it's reading the dates correctly the way it should. 12-30-2008, 12-30-2009. Now they're all the same date of the month, so that's really irrelevant, but it at least allows Tableau to read those incorrectly. So if we go to sheet one, we see here, it's already seeing it as a date, so that helps us out with that regard. We don't have to go down here and use the submenus. We can just throw this into the columns here. So we have our dates. Now we can just pick any one of these measures. We can have total recalls or total number, number of vehicles recalled, and we have our simple line chart, okay? Simple as that. One of the things that the earlier exercises encourage you to do is go to analysis and unaggregate the measures. That's something you don't want to do when you're dealing with forecasting because that will not allow you to forecast because what's this doing is it's actually summing these up and giving you a point to draw that line chart. So you need to have those measures aggregated. But if you take this off, it won't let you do the forecast. So put that back on, not let you do the forecast. You can just throw the forecast over here and there's our forecast. We have an estimate for 2013 is 2.4 million. And that is our forecast for that data set. That's really, that's really all you have to do. Um, you know, alternatively, you can do it, if we take that forecast out, we can do it this way through the analysis menu, forecast, show forecast, does the same thing, just, you know, there's a million ways to do things in most of these Windows applications. And, and really, that is it. That, that's what I'm looking for as far as the forecast. Now, the rest of that presentation is, you know, your narrative, right, where you got the data, what's interesting about that data, you know, tell us a little story about it. And I had a couple of people ask, okay, well, would we have to record ourselves? No, um, you don't have to record yourselves per se. You could do a PowerPoint presentation and then add audio to it. So I, I put some up on, on the course website that are some examples from previous terms, which all they did was just embed, you know, themselves speaking inside the PowerPoint and that worked fine. Um, so it's really up to you as, as to how, how you do that. Any, any questions about this? Let me see if we have the same people here. Okay. It is, just appears to be us three. So if you all have any specific um, concerns or questions concerning your own um, so projects. I just one quick question. So I, I guess I picked the other series of data because I thought generally the, the thought was to show what Tableau can do, right? Right. A absolutely. So in, in addition to just having that forecast, mm -hmm. you do have to have some additional interesting visualizations, right? Whether it's a heat map or some sort of scatter plot, there has to be something else, right? Mm -hmm. But but, okay. but the, the, the crux of it is, is just that forecast and then okay. really how you want to do the other things and really 
that's up to you and what you've learned up to this point through the other exercises. But yeah. yeah. And forecast is really like one one graph. Right. Yeah. It's, just, it's just the one graph. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, because you you have that graph, and then you have the more I guess you can call them descriptive graphs that kind of mm -hmm. tell us kind of a story about the data that you're using. Not okay. ne not necessarily the forecasting, but you know, okay. if there's yeah. some interesting correlations or some relationships there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Any other questions? I, I wasn't planning on going over Python. I think John's going to be doing a, a Python uh, office hours tomorrow, I believe. So I, I actually think it's today, the same our, time. Oh, is it, is it right now? Okay. I so, think so. All right. So if y'all want to, you know, leave and go and visit with John a bit, you know, you're more than welcome to. I just wanted to be here and be available. I know I've had quite a few questions about getting Tableau to work and getting the data put in there and, I, I thought I'd have more people show up, but it's just the two of y'all, and I've been chatting with y'all. Sure. Yeah. Sure, Rose, you have a question? Okay, yeah, her mic's not working. That's yeah. all right. And then she's going to type out a question, and then we'll... Yeah, I, I can see her questions. Oh, yeah, you can see her typing. Uh, uh, really, I'd say probably at, you're going to need one like a title slide. You need one that has kind of an intro of your data set where you got it. That's two slides. You're going to need a slide for your forecast. A couple of slides for the rest of your uh, visualizations. One, two. So I think I think at least five or six slides. Because then you'll need a slide kind of wrapping everything up and telling us if there's any any interesting conclusions that you you can make from your data. So yeah, I'd say at a minimum five or six slides would probably be appropriate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, the samples, they, they decided to go kind of the more slide wise, but it's really, it's really up to you. As long as you get your point across, you have those um, visualizations that are in the requirements. I'm fine with that. You know, I, I don't need a whole term paper on this it's supposed to you know it, it is a 200 point assignment but you know that being said i i don't need you know 30 slides you know if you can get your point across in 10. Yeah. we have to get through in five minutes right right exactly so if you're gonna have 100 slides you gotta you gotta talk really fast yeah because it's about five minutes, so you're doing a short intro, you're doing your, this is my data set, this is where I got it. Here's some descriptive visualizations about the data set, here's the forecast. You know, here's an interesting takeaway from the forecast, and then really that's it, so. Yeah. All right. Well, you're very welcome, Rose. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think I think Bitcoin is very interesting. Uh, it kind of depends on what what you're looking at, uh, but yeah, I think that's a, definitely a timely and relevant subject. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. Right. Make sure it's still recording. Pretty good. So, <laughs> And we'll post some of the recording, um, at least the uh, forecasting section. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've been recording for about 14 minutes, so I'll I'll go down and pull out the forecasting portion, and I'll, I'll post that in the class, if not later this evening. Um, 
first thing in the morning. It'll, it'll probably be later this evening. Oh my goodness. All I right. think it's Bob's microphone. Oh, yeah. You can hear bits and pieces coming through. Yeah. Oh. Here. There, let me mute her. There, it's a little better. <laughs> 